and who is looking to get into the world of music production, specifically in Ableton, but you don't really know where to start, or maybe you're already a musician who's familiar with a different DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, for those of you who don't know, and you wanna to transition to Ableton, but again, you might need a little bit of guidance. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a just simple day one starter, most basic Ableton tutorial that'll get you off the ground, get you going, and start working on that first song. Now I'm gonna skip over a lot of things, things that are maybe a little bit more advanced because I'm just gonna give you like the groundwork to get you started. First thing you're gonna see when you get into Ableton is this. And basically we've got our vertical columns here. This is your live view. We are not really gonna be using this because that's more for when you're doing live performance. If you just hit tab, it'll switch you over to these horizontal rows, which is your session view. This is gonna be what you're probably gonna start with if you're just recording in the studio. This main grid in the center are your tracks. This is your map of the song. So each track is a different instrument usually, or sound. Um, it says here, MIDI, MIDI, audio, audio. That is what it comes loaded with. So again, if you don't know this, audio is like a recording and MIDI is a digital recording that you can manipulate after the fact. So if you just sing into a microphone or you mic up like drums or a piano, that'll be audio. And if you have a MIDI keyboard or instrument that can be plugged in to Ableton and you're playing a digital instrument with the MIDI as a controller, that's gonna be what goes into your MIDI. And then again, if you just wanna change one note, you can do that because it's a digital instrument. You are gonna wanna have a MIDI controller or if you're just starting out and you don't have one yet, you can totally use the keyboard of your laptop. Over here on the left, you'll see it's kind of like your files, your folder. This is where you're gonna find all your instruments and your extra um, things that can either produce the sound or manipulate the sound. Over here on the right, is everything you're going to need when you're ready to record. And then at the bottom here, this is where if you drag a plugin or an effect onto your track, this is where it's gonna pop up so that you can go ahead and control it. Before we dive into all of that, let's go ahead and hit command comma. And remember this, command comma. This is going to be very, very important because this is your preferences. You're gonna pull this up before you get started with anything at all in Ableton. There are a whole bunch of tabs over here, and the first one we're gonna do is look and feel. Where's a theme? I love these. Let's just go ahead and, uh, whoa, this is uh, giving morning person. It's bright, it's airy, it's not really me. Um, we have mid light, mid dark. I like to just go through these because they're fun. And of course, I like dark. It is more easy on the eyes. And then if you come up here to zoom display, you can go ahead and zoom all the way in. Let's say maybe you have a hard time seeing, um, but it's a little bit claustrophobic. You can also zoom all the way out. This is really great if you have like a big studio monitor so that the screen is way bigger and you can still see all of your little tabs on the side, but you have way more space in the middle to fit a whole lot of stuff on like a really large project. I usually like to keep mine around 85, but since I am doing this tutorial, we're gonna zoom in just a little bit so that you can really see everything. Then you're gonna go to audio. This is super important. This is where you select your input and your output. So again, super basics. If you are using a DAW, you're gonna have an audio interface. That is basically what translates things like your MIDI keyboard, your microphone, and your speakers between those things and your computer. I'm using Scarlett Focusrite 4i4. Scarlett Focusrite is super popular. And so when you go to audio input, you are going to select that interface. Again, mine's Scarlett. Um, and normally I would also select Scarlett for the output because that goes to my speakers. But because I am recording the screen so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm just gonna keep mine on that. And you hit this test tone and you can hear it. That means everything is working and we are good to go. So then next, if you have, again, a MIDI keyboard, I'm using the Arteria Mini Lab. 
that's where you're going to find this here. Um, if you don't have one and you just want to use your laptop, I think you hit none, but I might be wrong on that. And if I am, I will correct it in the comments. But I've just been using the um, either the Arturia Mini Lab. You could go into plugins, but that is a little bit more advanced. We are just going to cover what is inside Ableton today. So let's go ahead and close that out. All the way at the very top, let's go to File. If you want a brand new set like what we have here, completely blank slate, you're going to select New Live Set. If you want to open an old project that you've worked on before you're gonna hit open live set if you had just been working on it and you want to go ahead and open something up that you just like were working on yesterday and you don't really want to go through all your finders and your, your folders and stuff whatever you, your most recent things will show up right here on, under recent which is super helpful if you start recording anything go ahead and save it you can hit command s to save or you can go into final file save name it put it somewhere organize so that every time you make a new change you'll go ahead and hit command s so that you don't lose that then when you are done 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 completely finished you're gonna go ahead and export it and that is when you have you take this whole project and it exports into an mp3 or wave file and I'll go ahead and select this just so you can see this right here it's gonna be your master which is all of it this right here is where your track starts this is where your track ends and you can select that um, on there I'll show you in a little bit this is where you hit wave and this is where you can select it to be an mp3 so that way you get both kinds of audio recording or if you just want one or the other you can hit turn this off it says 120 this is your bpm your beats per minute so that's your tempo how fast the clicks are going it automates to 120 and you can do your up and down arrows to make them faster or slower or you can just type it in 135 which is like house music you know or something like that um then if you um go to your to these two little dots this is going to be your metronome so you can hear the tap tempo. Now it normally is on classic. If it's highlighted and you hit the space bar, which is play, one, two, three, four. You'll see right here it says four, four. So that means we're in four, four time. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Those are your bars. Four, four. You can also change this to, you know, three, four. And that'll be. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But you can do five out of four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna keep it in four, four because that's kind of the standard. And then this is how many bars it counts you in for. So right now I'm at one bar. If you hit this big red record button, it'll count you in for one bar because that's what you've selected it to. Now, um, if you go ahead and hit this down arrow, you can actually change the sound of your click. Um, you can do wood. I really like it to be click. As you can see, it's a lot more subtle. It's very, very quiet. And the reason I like to do this is because when I'm recording on the microphone, I don't want the sound of the click to come through of the metronome to come through the headphones while I'm recording and pick it up on the microphone. So we have play, we have stop, and we have record. Those are the big ones. Your loop. So this is, let's say you want to record something but you're not quite ready yet and you just kind of want to practice, you're going to hit loop and it will just loop. Here I'll show you a little bit shorter. It's just going to loop the same part over and over and over into infinity so that you never run out while you're just practicing. This also is what you're going to use when you're ready to export to select the length of your song. Then when you hit export, that ending marker will automatically be where this is. Just another little tip for later. This little red button right here. This is your record enable button. You're gonna wanna hit this when you're ready to record because if it is not enabled on that track, nothing's going to be recorded. And also, if this is record enabled and you're ready to record on this track, well, guess what? This one has the record enable button on it and it's gonna start recording right here when you really want it to be recording right here. So that's important. Um, whatever track you are about to record on, go ahead and make sure that this red button is selected. If you hit command and select another one, you can actually go ahead and record both of those tracks at the same time. When you are ready to record your MIDI, you're gonna go ahead and select um, all ends because that's just making sure it's picking up anything that's plugged in. 
Um, so if you are recording on whichever MIDI instrument, it, you can also, you know, speci specify which one if you only want it to be recording one thing. If you're recording your audio, which again is going to be like your microphone, once again, hit your record enable, make sure you see which one has the little lights. My uh, audio interface has two microphone inputs, so that's why it says one and two, and as you can see, it's picking up sound from two. So you're gonna, rec you're gonna select two, and then you are ready to go. So um, that's kind of the basics on that. Again, these are each individual tracks. Right here at the bottom is your master, and you're always gonna see this little bar that shows your master. That's just all of the sounds all together. And this will show you if you're peaking, if you um, just want to go ahead and eliminate that peaking issue, um, you can go ahead and make each of these like negative five. This right here is your volume, by the way, for each track. If you do like negative five for all of these, that means they're all gonna be a little bit quieter all together so that your master isn't like going out of control. So um, it also, if you're recording and you like, something is really, really quiet, you can go ahead and then increase this. If, if it's already at zero and you increase it over zero, you're gonna peak. So that's why it's nice to kind of start this at like negative five, negative 10, maybe even negative 15, so that if you need to increase the volume, you can. Now over here to the left, let's go to instruments. If you go to instruments and then instrument rack, this is where you're gonna find a whole bunch of really awesome sounds that are pre-loaded onto Ableton. And let's just listen to some of them. These are your bass sounds. I just already get so much um, inspiration just from listening to all of these sounds. Let's go ahead and listen to some brass. So we have brass sounds, we have mallets, there's pads, and you can just, oh, rainbow wheel. And the minute that something is inspiring to you, go ahead and drag it onto your MIDI because this is a MIDI instrument. And then as you can see, the parameters are in this little display window down here, like I said. So go ahead and play it on your keyboard. Oh, and let's make sure it's record enabled. Right? And then when you're ready to record it, Yeah, okay, so not the most beautiful music ever, but just so you get the idea. And then um, you can add more tracks as you want to keep layering by simply selecting this, hitting Command D, or you can go into Create and say Insert MIDI Track. Now something that's kind of cool to note is when you are in these little um, tabs up here at the top, it shows you their shortcut. To the right of them so if you start noticing that you are selecting something up here multiple times go ahead and remember um, what that is so you can either go shift command t to insert a midi track or you can simply select the midi track and duplicate it however sometimes if you duplicate it you might have to erase whatever it just duplicated down to the next track so then we have audio effects. Now, if you have like a nice little vocal right here in your audio track and you want to have like a reverb or a delay, there are a bunch of audio effects, again, already preloaded into Ableton. And every time you get a new upgrade on Ableton, there are more preloaded things. So, you know, there's not gonna be as many on Ableton Lite, but there are still some that you can play with. And then as you keep upgrading, there's a whole bunch that are in here automatically. So there's echo, there's delay, there's filters, um, so many different things already on here and that's where you're going to find these. 
if you want your MIDI effects, they're here. And then plugins are basically anything that you're using to control sound that is outside of Ableton. They are so much fun to visually see how you are manipulating the sound. And that is about all I'm gonna get into over here. If you wanna search for something specifically like Nectar, so that's gonna be in plugins. You go Nectar, boom, you can search for it. So that's what this little search bar is for. It just helps you find things easier within all of this. Um, something that's also kind of cool just to note when you first open up Ableton, as you can see this little window down here, it kind of tells you what you're pointing at, which is really helpful if you aren't really sure, like, what is this? Oh, Groove Pool. Click here to hide or show the groove pool where you can edit the parameters. Yeah, so pretty much anything you hover your mouse over, Ableton will show you what that is in this corner, so can always refer to that. Um, I am not going to go into details on how to build a song because that will be in another lesson, but I really hope that this at least helped you kind of know at least what some of these buttons and knobs are and get you started. If you have any specific questions or something that you want me to elaborate on, please comment below. I absolutely love answering questions. I really want to help other people get into the production world. There's so much power in being able to produce for yourself and not have to wait for others and take those music ideas out of your head and just like make them a reality. Um, and so if this was helpful, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Peace.